This is problem 7.5 and we are now calculating the internal forces for the whole beam. So we have here a beam that is attached with a truss bearing. It means that it restricts to displacement in that y direction and in x direction. And then we have a normal bearing that only restricts motion in the y direction. And then we have a force applied at the middle of the beam, which is 5 kilonewtons. As you know, the first step always is external reactions. So, we draw the free body diagram of the whole beam. In this case, it's very easy, right? Very straightforward. We have my external load, which is five kilonewtons. And then I have my reaction forces, which are, are A, X, and A, Y, and B, Y. The equations of equilibrium, I take forces in X equals zero. That means that A, X is equals to zero. I take moment, I will take moment first to find out one of these two forces, and if the moment at A will be two times five kilonewtons plus four times B Y, right? So this is a negative moment, and this is a positive moment, and this is equals to zero. From here, I see that B Y is equals to 2.5 kilonewtons and I add forces in Y, and I get that AY minus five kilonewtons plus BY equals to zero. So from here, if I plug in this 2.5, I get that AY is also 2.5 kilonewtons. So this is a symmetrical beam, and that those results are as expected in the sense that this force since is located at the middle of my beam. The reaction forces are distributed, so the, the force is distributed equally in both supports. And it gives me, in both cases, 2.5 kilonewtons. So I could actually draw again my beam now with the correct forces. So I have a five kilonewtons and then I have a 2.5 kilonewtons over here and 2.5 kilonewtons over here. Okay, so now that we have a, the external forces, the second step, right, is to draw the free body diagram of a cut. Since I want to find the internal forces along the beam, I will choose a place to cut where I can get as a generic value for those internal forces. As you recall from the theory, we will have to cut as many times as we have an event occurring in my beam. In this case, one event is the X the external force that is applied. So I will cut over here, and that will be good for section one, which is from A to B. And then I will cut over here, and that will be good from B to C, okay? So the second step is draw free body diagrams of cuts or sections. And I will have as many sections as I have events occurring in my beam. Being events um, and a, a concentrated load, a distributed load, or a moment. So let me draw the free body diagram of section one. And we call this section one and this section two. And I will call this over here, X, because I will cut in a generic point so that X can take the values from zero all the way to two meters. 
a y 2.5 and then this is located at x let me draw the x in another color so that we have consistency that, that we have named the x the values of x in pink so this is x and then i have my internal forces my internal forces are the normal force the shear force and the moment in this case we always will have that the normal force is equal to zero so i would actually concentrate in the shear force and the moment the bending moment because the normal force in this case that i don't have any force in the actual direction of the beam, the normal force will be equal to zero. So we see that if we add forces in x for the, this diagram, I get that my normal force is equal to zero. And then I add forces in y, and then I get that 2.5 minus v is equal to zero. So, and as you see, it's independent on, of x. So my v is equal to 2.5 and it's constant for all x. And then I will take the moment, I will take the moment where I cut, which is, I will call it O, and then I take moment at point O, and I think. So the moment produced by this force will be x, 2.5, and it's a negative moment, minus 2.5x, right? And then I have plus m is equals to zero. Therefore, m is equals 2.5x kilo newton meters. So as you see, I have an expression for the moment for all values of x. So it means that if I give an x equals to zero, I get that my moment is equals to zero. And if I x is equals to two meters, so I am at B, my moment is equals to five kilonewtons meters. So I, I was able with only one cut, find the internal forces for the whole section of that beam. Now I will draw the free body diagram of section two. So it's very similar. It's a little bit longer, but now I do see my force applied, which is five kilonewtons. I do have the force of my support, which is 2.5 kilonewtons. I will make the cut. So I know that this is 2.5, two meters. And I will name this distance x. I want to make a, the note quote that there is people, uh, authors, and that like to, like to name x from the beginning. And that will lead you to the same results, maybe a different equation, but at the end, the diagrams that we are looking for will be exactly the same. So, I particularly like to use X when I, from where I cut on, but there are people that call it from where they start the beam. So you have to decide what is best for you, but both methods are good. So I draw my internal forces and I again add forces in X. Well, I always, I'm going to ignore my, uh, normal force because we know that all along the beam, if I don't have any external forces that produce any actual force, will always be zero. So I will add my forces in Y, and I have 2.5 minus 5 minus V is equals to zero. So from here, I already get that V is equals to negative 2.5 kilo newtons and is also constant for all values of x. Now I take moment at the point where I cut, which I name it O, and then I take moment at O equals to zero, and that leads me to. Now I have 
2.5 plus x, and it's a negative moment. So negative 2.5 plus x, this is 2. Okay, so here I have 2 plus x, right, times 2.5. Then I have positive 5x plus m equals to 0. Now I solve for m, right, in terms of x, and I get that this is equals to. I have um, 2.5 times 2 is 5, so it's negative 5, right? that it will go to the other side as positive. And then I have x, then x, uh, 5x and negative 2.5x. So finally, I have negative 2.5x plus 5. And this is all in kilo newtons meters. So I was able to find the expressions in terms of x for my first section and for my se second section. So now I'm going to draw these functions that I just found. I will draw the functions for my shear and I will draw my functions for my moment. And as I said, this is two sections, so I will have functions that describe my shear for the first section, and I will have another function that describe my shear for the second section. And I have, for the moment, the same. So, for my first section, I have that is constant for all x, and it's 2.5. So I have 2.5 constant for my all x for the first section. And then I have that the moment was zero when I start and five when I finish. And the way that I go from zero to five is a straight line with a positive slope. So I go from here to here with a straight line. So this function over here is 2.5x. Now, let's go to section two. Section two, I have that the shear is also constant I negative 2.5 for all values of x. So I have here, my shear is negative 2.5 kilonewtons. This is kilonewtons, right? And I have that the moment right here is a negative slope. So if I also, for x valid from 0 to 2, so when it's 0, the value is 5, and I go to when it's equals to 2, so I cover my all x, and I get that is equals to 0, so I go all the way to 0, and I go from 5 to 0 with a line with a negative slope of negative 2.5. And those are my diagrams. Very important is that we always understand that the, we have these continuities, and that creates jumps in my graph, like here, here, and here. But I have concentrated loads. Those jumps have to be equals to the concentrated loads that I have in my beam. For example, I have here a 2.5 concentrated load that goes upwards. That creates a jump of the same magnitude. Here I have a concentrated a load of five kilonewtons. That creates a discontinuity of the same magnitude in the same direction. So that's discontinuity right here. And here I have another concentrated load, uh, load that also creates a discontinuity. And this here this gap has to be exactly the same magnitude. And that's one way you prove that your graphs are correct, because it has to start in zero and end up in zero, because you have, you have a beam that is 
loaded, but the air besides the beam is not loaded. So you have to start at zero and end up at zero. And most of the times, those are uh, the diagram closes with those discontinuities and those jumps, so to say, in the function have to be in the equal magnitude as the concentrated load. And if for the moment we don't have any concentrated moment, so we don't have any uh, discontinuity in our a moment diagram and it starts at zero and ends at zero. So that means that that leads to my impression that my diagrams are correct. So in this case, the shear force is positive. In this case, the shear force is negative. And in this case, all moment is positive. When I have a positive moment, means that my beam is uh, deformed a concave up, concave up, concave upwards.